<laughs> I'm having a wild, crazy fantasy right now. And I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> yes. That one that we all have. You know the one where you wake up in the morning and you don't need a job? You know that one? <laughs> when money doesn't exist and you can move your body all gymnastical like, you know? And, and hey, gymnastical, that can be a word. Because this is our fantasy after all. You know? And at any point in the day, you could just curl right up and look all hot and cute all day long. <laughs> Yeah. And then the only thing you'd have to do would be lick your own ass. Of course, then you'd be a cat. And uh, See, that's where the fantasy ends for me and reality begins. Because you can't use that line of logic at a job interview. I mean, you know when they ask you that question, why do you want to work here? I was like, you can't tell them, hey, since I can't stay at home and lick my own ass, I might as well just work for you. It's not going to get you hired. You're not going to get the job. But there'll be times when you're out in the world going through your day and you'll be dealing with customers and clients and your boss and a little voice inside your head is going to say, hey, stay at home, lick my own ass. <laughs> it's not a bad idea right now. I think I'm going to call out tomorrow. See, I'm not from around here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from this place that's a two-hour bus ride in a world away where everyone looks the same and wear the same color plaid each and every day. And I moved here to New York City, a city that never sleeps. And I found out the hard way that if you need one job, two jobs, three, to pay for that little place to sleep for a few precious hours. And uh, I came to this bone-crunching realization where I was at home in my kitchen humming a simple tune. Mm -hmm. I was doing this for about five minutes when I realized I was humming to the sound of my microwave. <laughs> there, was no, there was no music coming from that machine. You know, I didn't hear any Nickelback, I didn't hear any Creed, there was no DMX, there was no Jay-Z. <clears throat> I was humming to the sound of my chicken. <laughs> I was. I've, I've lived in this city for a very long time now, and I feel I still find myself being uh, filled with shock and awe and amazement, and I, I'm amazed by all these places that are strewn across the city. There's thousands of them, like diamonds in the rough, and you know, local New Yorkers know them as bodegas. <laughs> They're these these little teeny delis that are really small, and they have this music that's pulsating, and it's in a language from another world, mm -hmm. and you can't understand a word they're singing, but it's very helpful because the deli's really tiny and small, and that's the law, and you have to kind of move your hips to get right in, and you grab your 25 cent bag of chips, and you feel rich! Yeah, and one day, I walked into my local bodega, and I heard the sound of a single human voice. And it was the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. The texture, the tone, the timbre, the rhythm. And I picked up my 25 cent bag of chips and I was swaying as I stood in line. And the guy behind the counter, he let out a laugh and he said, stop! Because I was dancing to the Koran. And uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to dance to the Koran. Now, orthodoxy forbids that. But see, I believe in free will and the rights of the individual. So I say you can move and sway to any sound you want, whether it's the microwave, a song, or an excellent book on tape. So when I go home tonight, I'm going to snuggle up to the dulcet tones of Louis Black and oh, me of Little Faith. <laughs> But you know what I want? Do you know what I want? I want all drugstores to be redesigned. I want the tampons to be in the front by the chocolate where they belong. <laughs> Don't make me go through a maze to get that package that I seek. Do you know where they put them now? right next to the condoms. <laughs> and I don't need to be reminded of what I won't be doing for a week! Oh no. 
oh no. And when I bring that package up to the register, the guy always turns to me and says, and how's your evening? <laughs> I think this little package says it all. <laughs> I don't think I need an explanation, but you know what? When I go home, I'm gonna do a little interior decorating. Okay? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Guys, I cannot get away from the fact that I give really good foam. I do. I do, but what I do for a living, guys, is, you know, you're gonna find somewhere in your house, under your Christmas tree, a toy that's broken. Oh. <laughs> and you're gonna call that 800 number that's on the side of the box. And you're gonna get me. Oh yeah, I am that last stop before India. <laughs> and you better be nice, or I'm gonna flip the switch on you. And I'm gonna take down all your information, and I'm gonna email it to China. <laughs> One day, this woman calls up and she says, oh, So I said, I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna send an email to the child that made your toy. <laughs> and he's gonna send an email back. Oh, I'm sorry, no he can't. He works 20 hours a day and gets paid 20 cents a week and doesn't have a childhood. Well, your kid's just a little disappointed. Fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, baby. And that's my time. My name is Maggie Noah.